Good morning. Every day we walk through different doors. Today alone, you likely walk through several doors, different doors. When you woke up, you walked through your bedroom door. You probably passed through another door when you went to the bathroom. You walked through another door when you left your house. Coming to common ground, you walk through another door. You may have passed through several other doors as well. In fact, if you try counting the number of doors you walk through in a lifetime, it could be thousands. Doors come in different sizes and designs. They can be made of wood, glass, or iron. Some are very thick, while some are light. Some doors are common and plain, while some can't help but be noticed because they are unique and stand out. You need a door to get into a place and come out of a place. Doors help us get in and out of a room, car, bus, train, or plane. This means that where there is no door, a person could be confined and locked up in a particular place. Being confined or tied down to a particular place speaks of stagnation. We all desire growth and progress in every area of our lives. Without open doors, a person can be confined to a particular level or spot. Open doors enhance movement. We need open doors to move from one place to another, from one level to another. Open doors give us access to blessings, places, people, and opportunities. Anybody can achieve anything. Do you believe that? Well, can you see this image? <laughs> that pretty much proves it, doesn't it? I absolutely believe that anyone can achieve anything once they put their mind to it, once they really commit to something. Now, there is a caveat. Those that succeed are those who walk through that door, walk through that door of opportunity when it's open. And there's one secret to getting through that door of opportunity. I'm going to tell you what that secret is. Be willing to walk through <laughs> with open arms when that door opens. That's it. We just need to be willing and open. I absolutely love the story about how Frank Sinatra got his big break, his start. He was working as a waiter, as many of you may have already known. Um, he was working as a waiter in a restaurant. And this man had come in, and one of the biggest names in the music industry. And so he saw this guy. And you know what he did? He went over to the table next to this man, emptied it off, jumped up on the table, and started singing, right? <laughs> in the restaurant. Is that not amazing? He knew he was going to lose his job. <laughs> he also knew that opportunity may not come along again. So he took advantage of it. You never know when that door of opportunity is going to open up for you. For some people, that big break might come early in their life, in their career, and others it may take a little bit longer. However, for all of those who become successful, it's that one key element, being ready and willing to respond. Unfortunately, for every one of those who were ready, there are many, many who are not. So the idea is to always be open, open to those infinite possibilities that life has to offer us. Here's the thing, by the time we're adults, we've pretty much developed some very seriously ingrained habits and uh, patterns. We get very comfortable in our routines. We get very comfortable in the way we do things, all the way from how we make our bed to what we choose for breakfast. We tend to be creatures of habit. And whenever we break out of our comfort zone and try something new, we've opened a door to a new opportunity. Of course, it's easy to fall back into, but I always do it this way. 
And, and sometimes we do that. We get a little bit lazy. However, if we keep that open mind, if we take a chance, wonderful things can and very likely will happen for us. For instance, you might discover something about yourself that you didn't know, something that you were capable of that you didn't know some, you were capable of, something that you really enjoy and were good at that it never occurred to you you were good at. Sometimes it's very scary to try new things. If you seek a new activity or a, a, a new opportunity though, you might just find that it's really awesome. You might find that you can use that new skill, that new idea to be in service to somebody else. And we all know that being in service, it comes back tenfold. You may even stretch your abilities. Some people won't try new things because they worry they may, might fail. Now, in reality, you can't fail. Life doesn't set us up to fail. Every time we learn something, every time we do something, we grow. Whatever it is we decide to pursue, we're going to be a wiser person than before we started it. We have to be, simply because we become open to those new experiences, those new ideas, those new possibilities. And what does it take to, to move through that open door? Vision, courage, and discernment. And Nathan even alluded to that, right? Not all doors are the ones we want to go through. We can usually sum up the most transformational times in our life with one or th all three of those words, vision, courage, and discernment. During, um, woo -hoo. During times of change and growth, we can rely on clear vision to direct us. We can rely on that courage to persevere when change becomes a little bit scary or a little bit uncomfortable. And it's not only the courage that empowers us to walk through a door, it's also the wisdom that comes from our inner knowing. Our inner knowing that it's not just a door, it's part of our journey, part of where we're going and what we're doing. Vision is the bridge between the present and the future. I love this quote by P.K. Bernard. A man without a vision is a man without a future. A man without a future will always return to his past back to the same old, same old pattern, right? People without vision tend to spend their lives <clears throat> taking the path, path of least resistance. It's much easier to vo avoid discomfort when we do that. Fear comes into play there. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of trying or being open to something new. Sometimes that's really scary for us. Vision is what we see. It is also the way in which we see. It's the lens that interprets the events of our life, the way we view the world, the way we view life and experiences and relationships, our concept of God. Our minds receive images through our eyes and then they're interpreted through our heart. And if our heart becomes bitter or jealous or deeply wounded from one thing or another, our heart can become distorted. And then, in turn, that distorts how we see and experience the world and our relationships. And what we perceive is going on and what's really going on at that point could be, very likely are, two different things. The way we view life can feel and look real. It can make perfect sense. However, the truth is this. We see what we believe to be true. Would you agree with that? <laughs> In other words, if you have the wrong pretext, you are going to misunderstand the context. I was reading some articles during the week and I'm preparing for this morning. And I read something that I really liked and I want to share it with you and I, I don't know who to uh, credit for it. 
They said that the true divine vision consists of foresight, insight, and oversight. Foresight is like looking at life through a telescope. This outlook allows us to know what's ahead as it connects us to our future. Foresight is the element of vision that helps life make sense and gives us the motivation. Insight is like viewing life through a microscope. This perception gives us an understanding of why things happen in life. It also helps determine the underlying motivations of the heart. And then oversight, it puts life into context. It is like flying over your house in a helicopter. There is a perspective that you can only receive from that vista that helps you understand where, we, where you are with respect to where everything else is. And I felt like that was really clear um, how we can look at that uh, vision in our life. A clarity of vision is like a compass that helps guide us to take the best action, make the right and best choices for us, that helps us move in the direction of our highest and our best self. And after all, that's what we're all wanting to do. And then there's courage. It takes courage to walk through open doors. There is no doubt about that. With courage, you can be staring at that open door that's right in front of you and walk through it because you're not afraid of what's behind that door. You're not afraid of what's going to happen if you do walk through that door. That's what courage does for us. It helps propel us forward and have that confidence in ourselves and in life that life isn't going to just get us all messed up. It absolutely does take courage to seize that opportunity that's lying before us. And the truth is, if you don't open or walk through that door, you're never going to know what grand adventures are awaiting you. There are times in our lives that doors seem to open, and then there are times that doors seem to close. Life opens doors for us when we're ready. And sometimes those doors close because we're hesitant. Now, that doesn't mean another door won't open. You haven't lost your chance. Life is not that stingy. You'll have another opportunity. Experiencing those open and those closed doors, that's part of life. And there are times when delaying through walking through that open door can mean a couple of things. It can mean that it isn't the right time for you, or maybe it's signifying a lack of faith a lack of faith in yourself or a lack of faith in life. No worries though. Life will open another door when you're ready. When you're ready for that challenge, when you're ready for change in your life. Doors open when we are willing and open, open to listening to that still small voice within, to that guidance. I read this great story <laughs> that made the national news um, some years ago. CNN actually had it as a headline. A man passed the bar exam. Hmm. Now, how often does that make the news, right? A man passed the bar exam. Well, this man was a little unusual because he had failed it 47 times. <laughs> You can understand that, right? <laughs> Patricia, uh-huh, I get it. <laughs> At age 60, he finally, on the 48th try, passed that bar exam. Pretty amazing, right? His intention for the future was to um, be in practice for the next 20 years. <laughs> and I'm sure he did. <laughs> I'm sure. Talk about vision and courage, yeah? Examples like that are so inspiring. It's a great reminder for us that not everybody excels and, and exceeds early on. It's never too late, right? There's always time. Um, it's hard not to admire his perseverance because that continued way beyond the point when most of us would have just given up and quit. 
the human tendency is to go to the opposite extreme, to give up after one or two setbacks. This isn't for me. This isn't mine. It's very easy to do that, isn't it? Even though a reasonable possibility of success still exists. And that's what he saw. He was not going to let that beat him. And he didn't. We're called to have the courage to look at all doors before us that need to be opened and be courageous enough to pass through no matter how challenging that door may look. Trust life. If that door in front of you is open, if that opportunity is right there, all will, will be well as you walk through it. Life always has your back. I know that's the truth. And then there's discernment. How do we know if it is the right door to walk through? Just because an opportunity presents itself and it looks appealing doesn't necessarily mean it's for you. And likewise, just because an open door looks a little uncertain doesn't mean you shouldn't walk through. You don't want to miss new opportunities because of fear nor do you necessarily want to take every opportunity that comes at you. So how is it that you tell if that door is for you at this particular time or not? The key is knowing how to discern between the two of those things. If there's a compromise in any way, if you have to negotiate your beliefs or your truth, your morals or your ethics to justify doing it, and most likely it's not for you. Most likely not a real good idea. When you have doubt, when you don't have that idea of knowing, right, that's the time to go into prayer or into meditation, to ask for that guidance. Ask for a way to know, to feel, to understand that this truly is where you need to be. Because through prayer, meditation, whatever your connection is with, with that higher power, discernment can open your eyes, both physical eyes and your spiritual eyes. And you will know the answer if you're open to receiving. Check your gut. See how you feel. Because that which is for our highest good never feels like fear, never feels like dread. It's a little bit exciting, an open opportunity. Check in with self. When life presents you with an opportunity, what the heck? Say yes. See what happens. Because saying yes to new um, opportunities can really have a ripple effect. It can open you up to those new adventures in your life that you may not have otherwise experienced. Saying yes can in really enhance your life experience and, in turn, someone else's as you move that into service. If you want to feel empowered, there's no better way to do it than to say yes to something, especially something challenging. When you say yes, you're making an affirmation that you are capable, no matter how challenging it may seem. When you say no to things, you're bringing in that negativity. And that's one of the biggest causes of lack of success, poor health, and stress. And allowing that positive energy to flow is beneficial to mind, to body, to spirit. And it can help you achieve so many things that you may not have realized you were capable of doing. So whenever you break out of your comfort zone and you try something new, you open those new doors to opportunities. It's easy to fall back into, I've always done it this way. However, keep an open mind. Take a chance because great things will happen. And so I'm going to close with a quote by Pat Richardson. May you have the vision to recognize the door that is yours, the courage to open it, and the wisdom to walk through. Thank you so much for being here while I shared this truth, as I understand it.